What is it going everyone? Today I'm here with New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 14 and Tokyo Dome Night 1 review and what an excellent Wrestle Kingdom I thought we had this morning. In my opinion, the best Wrestle Kingdom we've had since Wrestle Kingdom 9, which was five years ago today. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive right into the show. Now, I did not watch any of the pre-show matches, so this video will be strictly reviewing the main show, which of course opened up with the eight-man tag team match, the first of two Juice and Thunder Liger retirement matches. Pretty much just as Liger and all of his old friends and rivals. That's pretty much what this match was. Him and Santos. Uh, started the match off and it was fun it was a fun opener you know all the legends pretty much got their stuff in they worked hard for liger uh taguchi who i thought was kind of the odd guy in there that didn't really fit in with all of them um he really he had a really good showing against uh liger as well and ended up pinning liger at the end you know he ended up pinning the boomy a knee for a nice near fall ended up just beating the shit out of liger and ended up pinning him clean as a whistle in the middle of the ring which i was very surprised i definitely did not see taguchi getting the win over liger honestly i thought you know liger would win this match and then in his retirement match he would lose there to put over over, you know uh, Takahashi and Lee but no Liger put put over to Gucci here which I didn't really have a problem with I just didn't expect it so yeah fun opening match like I said it's pretty much Liger and all his old enemies and pals just having one last raw uh, to send Liger off so that was a good way to start the show and of course afterwards everyone kind of you know did the whole farewell with the Liger and you know held his arms up and everything the whole you know the whole nine yards so yeah that was a fun way to start the show and then we go into another eight-man tag team contest take, uh, featuring LIJ taking on Zuki Goon Zuki Goon right from the get-go attacked LIJ and it's a huge brawl erupted uh for the first half of the match and it kind of broke back down to you know a regular eight-man tag match um shingo uh, looked pretty damn good in this match him and suzuki had a pretty good back and forth exchange um the match pretty much is focused around sonata and zack saber jr because that is a, a british heavyweight title match at wrestle kingdom night two tomorrow so obviously that was kind of the main basis center on this match but sonata looked good zack saber jr got in the end of it end up uh putting in the rings of saturn uh on dubushi pretty much torturing him and submitted him to get the win so zuki Gun got the win really good match i actually liked it a lot more it was a very fun sprint uh from there i'm going to another eight man tag team match uh bullet club taking on chaos this was really forgettable nothing really of importance happened here you had you know yano's comedy stuff with him and fale uh at one point ishii gave fale a brain buster which was very impressive but obviously the match again kind of like the match previous was sent around one match because they have a match tomorrow which was kenta and roki goto of course that is a never open weight title match tomorrow at night too so that's pretty much what the match is based off of but uh goto at the end hit the yoshikiroshi followed by gtr while staring at kenta to pin uh yujiro takahashi get the win for chaos so uh, that's whatever um worst match in the show without a doubt very forgettable nothing important like i said pretty much kind of a it was kind of a bad repeat of the previous match i'll say that so yeah nothing really much to it uh then we go to the first championship ma match of the night which was the iwgp tag team championship match uh the grills of destiny defending against finn juice juice robinson and david finley uh right from the get-go you know finley and uh juice charged um god on the stage and the ramp uh god got the upper hand you know they took out robinson uh gave me huge back uh uh, back bump onto the ramp which looked painful finley just kind of vanished so uh tama and tonga uh and tola tonga tonga loa there we go and tama tonga <laughs> sorry i apologize uh pretty much just dragged uh juice back in the ring which they isolated him beat him down for a good while uh finley at one point made an appearance back onto the apron got the hot tag ran rough shot and then you know um Finishing sequence was fun, you know. Um, Juice Robinson hit the pulp friction on Tatanga Loa to take him out. He came down to Ta uh, Tama, taking on both members of Finn Juice by himself, pretty much. Nice exchange where he tried to hit the uh, uh, the RKO, I guess you can call it, or this is cutter, uh, onto. Um, onto uh, Finley, but then Finley threw him in the juice, tried to hit one on Juice, Juice countered that, threw him into Finley, which Finley had a stunner on him. Um, juice Robinson was able to hit the uh, the hand of God, followed by a um, followed by a slice spread number two from Finley. For the one, two, three, and Finn Juice are your brand new IWGP Tag Team Champions. Very happy for them, Main, uh, mainly for Juice Robinson. I've always been a big Juice Robinson fan, so I was very happy to see him in the Tag Team Titles here with, with uh, David Finley. The match was very fun. I thought I told a very good story. Uh, the best, you know, IWGP Tag title match or tag title match i've seen at wrestle kingdom in quite a while they usually are kind of like you know good to whatever matches but this one was a lot of fun and uh definitely had a good story to it the crowd was very behind juice robinson and uh yeah it was very fun and very happy to see Finn Juice win the tag team titles, like I said. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to the Texas Death Match for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. Lance Archer defending against John Moxley. This match was brutal. 
uh, and about as chaotic as his guy. These two went out there, beat the shit out of each other. Every time Moxley used a chair or a kendo stick, it went straight into Archer's head. Archer did not give a fuck. He laid his shit on to Moxley as well. You know, at one point, even using the young lions to throw at Moxley to take him out. Uh, these two used tables. Um, at one point, Archer even used a goddamn plastic bag to try and suffocate Moxley. Like, they were trying to commit murder at this point in this match. It was just absolutely hectic and i loved absolutely every single second of it uh moxley was just laying his shit in so was archer archer ended up hitting uh a reverse um razor's edge or blackout that's what he calls it blackout uh on, through the chairs on the moxley which that was almost a 10 count right there moxley thankfully got out uh moxley did a beautiful counter of the evd claw when he was just trying to lock it in lock uh, moxley was able to counter it into well he had it in for a while yeah that's where he had the plastic bag he did it with the plastic bag and at some point moxley Looked like he was out, came back to, uh, ended up countering it into a great um, uh, cross arm breaker for, to try to submit him. So that was great stuff. Uh, the match went to the outside um, where tables got introduced and that actually led to the finish with Moxley hitting a uh, Death Rider off the apron through a table. And then Moxley got up before Archer did. Archer was countered out and Moxley won the death match. Like I said, very chaotic. They use a bunch of weapons. At one point, um, Archer used uh, a helmet with needles on it that cut open Moxley. Uh, just these two beating the shit out of each other. There wasn't any soul moments. There wasn't those times where like in WWE where, you know, it's the last minute standing match where they take a lot of pauses because the referee's doing the slowest 10 count imaginable. You didn't get that here. There's no bullshit. It was straight to the point and they beat the shit out of each other and I thought it was great. Moxley regains a championship, so he will be defending the U.S. title at night two against Drew Robinson. Um, very surprised to see Moxley win it. I wasn't sure, you know, if this was going to be his last uh, matches in New Japan or what, but you know what? Him and Drew were supposed to have that rubber match back back at King of Pro Wrestling, so honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if Moxley ended up losing the title back to Juice. Uh, but hopefully they don't do that. I love Moxley New Japan. I think he's been having the, the run of his career so far. Well, not of his career, but, you know, post-WWE. I prefer his New Japan stuff to his AEW stuff, honestly. But, uh, yeah, it was very surprising, but great to see Moxley regain the United States Championship. And from there, I'm going to go to my opinion. Uh, well, afterwards, Moxley cut a promo saying that he's going to finish Juice Robinson at night, too, too. So, yeah, that happened. But, yeah, from there, I'm going to which I thought was match of the night. This is my match of the year so far, and it's going to be very hard to top. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, Will Ospreay defending against Hiromu Takahashi, Hiromo Takahashi. Um, magnificent match. I cannot explain how much I loved it. Ospreay played a great dick aggressive kind of a I don't give a shit heel. He wasn't a heel, but he kind of played that role. Uh, Takahashi's selling of his neck was superb. Like, I thought he broke his neck at least a thousand times throughout it. Um, you know, Ospreay hitting the hidden blade which I thought pretty much killed him at that point. Uh, just the back and forth in this, you know, uh, Takahashi hit the time bomb at the end, and Osprey kicked out of it. Osprey hit the Oz cutter, and Takahashi kicked out of it. Went from Storm's End, but Takahashi countered it into a destroyer. Like, there's just uh, the insane amount of counters, and, you know, just everything about this match is phenomenal. The storytelling, uh, like I said, with Takahashi's neck, and, you know, obviously he's a face in this match, and even though throughout, building up to this match is kind of like a friendly the competition, like, no, I'm, like, well, Osprey's kind of like, no, I'm glad you're back. You know, like, I like that you're back, but in this match, it's kind of like, I don't give a fuck that you're back. I'm the shit of you now. I like that mood change. Like I said, the storytelling is excellent, and I uh, love that absolutely every second out of it. Plenty of near falls. Like, there's so many points in this match, I thought that, that was it, but it wasn't. The athleticism was insane. Osprey definitely uh, just went out there and did not hold anything back against Takahashi. And Takahashi, I believe this is his first singles match since being back from breaking his neck. Uh, he definitely hasn't missed a step because he went out there and probably had my favorite match he's had in his career so far, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, loved absolutely every second of it. Takahashi got the win to regain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, the championship he never lost because he had to vacate it due to his broken neck. But, yeah, just excellent match definitely if you had to watch anything on the show this is the match to watch like i said match of the night and match of the year so far in my opinion from there we go to the iwgp intercontinental championship of course jay white defending against tatsuya naito for my personal benefit i love this match because i just love these type of style of matches now the one thing i could have wish it could have been different was the pacing at, there's a point there's points where it felt really slow and like just nothing was happening i feel like the, they could have used those opportunities to kind of 
I don't know, do more. But I like the style of match where it's kind of slower paced, but what they're doing means stuff. It's not like they're just doing stuff to just do it. But it, it was kind of inconsistent. Like it would be slow paced and all of a sudden like they'd be going at it for like 100 miles an hour for like a minute. And then they would just be very slow for like another 5-10 minutes. So I felt the inconsistencies kind of hurt the match for the most part. But uh, for this style of match, like I said, I do love it. The story of this match was centered around Naito's knee. Uh, JY was working on it throughout the entire match. Gato got involved multiple times to the point where the referee got taken out. He got in there. Uh to try and take down Naito. Naito beat the shit out of him. Jay White used that to his advantage. Tried to hit Naito with the Blade Runner. Uh, Naito countered that with a running Destino out of nowhere, uh, but was not able to capitalize on it, so uh, wasn't able to get the win. But Tatsuya and Naito did end up hitting a Destino once again for a two count, which I lost my shit because I, was, I thought for sure that was it. Jay White tried to keep fighting, but Naito kept hitting him down, hit him down, hit one more Destino, one, two, three ends up winning the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. So Naito will be the main event on night two, taking on the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Like I said, I thought Naito and Jay White wasn't great, but I thought it was really good. But like I said, I do really enjoy those style matches. So for my personal benefit, I loved it. Just, it wasn't great or anything. It wasn't, you know, one of the best matches on the show, but I enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, Naito's Intercontinental Champion, like I said, going into Night 2. And then of course, we go to the main event of Night 1 of Wrestle Kingdom 14. The IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Kazuchika Okada, defending against Kota Ibushi. This match was fantastic. Now honestly, you can argue this match against the Takahashi Osprey match as match of the night, match of the year. And you know, I really wouldn't argue against it. But out of the two, I prefer the Junior Heavyweight title match more. But this was an excellent main event as well. Kota, he just did not give a flying fuck. He was emotionless. And what I mean by that was he did not give a shit how much pain he was inflicting. He was going to do whatever it took to win that heavyweight championship. And he was laying his shit on to Okada he, uh, to the point where he did a, a vicious double foot stomp to the chest of Okada. Where it even looked like Okada couldn't breathe because that shit hurt so much. Uh, just the, the PK kicks. And he was just at some point just clobbering down on Okada. Like you heard every fucking hit he hit on Okada. Just incredible stuff. Hit the Golden Star uh, Triangle Moonsault on the outside. Take Okada off. Uh, Okada, of course, did his signature, you know, dive over the barricade onto the outside in the crowd. Did that. So you got the whole nine yards. You get the, the typical Okada Tokyo Dome stuff. Which, by the way, speaking of Okada, first the pants. Now he's just wearing, like, regular wrestling trunks. Not like the kind of biker trunks where they're kind of longer. You know, like, kind of like halfway down the leg. Just straight wrestling trunks, man, where it cuts off the leg. So I thought it was uh, very odd to see Okada wearing those. But yeah, this match had amazing storytelling to it. Uh, like I so, said, you know, uh, Bushi kind of being that more aggressive, emotionless, you know, because he's it, him wanting to win that championship took over him. You know, he was, it just wasn't himself. And uh, Okada just having that comeback. One of my favorite spots in the match uh, was Ibushi giving him the German suplex up to the second rope. And then uh, Okada went for a drop kick, but perfectly timed. Uh, Bushi jumps and catches him perfectly for a Golden Star power bomb. Love that spot. I thought that was the spot of the match, in my opinion. But these two keep fighting. Uh, Okada hits Ibushi with a tombstone on the apron for almost a 20 count. It was literally this close for Ibushi being counted out for the 20 count. So he beats the count. But Okada just lays in some Rainmakers. Um, even Ibushi threw his own Rainmaker at Okada out of desperation. But Okada's just weighing him with it. You think, you know, Ibushi's down, but Ibushi kicks out. Ibushi hits a V-trigger. Ibushi's having a comeback, a great comeback. But then Okada shuts him down. Uh, when he goes for a Phoenix Splash, misses. Okada shuts him down with the... Um, with the Rainmaker, followed by a final Rainmaker for the 1-2-3. So Okada def successfully defends the IWG IWGP excuse me, Heavyweight Championship. I apologize. Sometimes I get a little too excited and I start to stutter, come, you know, stumble across my words when I speak about things I really enjoyed. So I do apologize. But yes, Okada successfully defends his title and will be facing Tatsuya and Naito. And of course, the double gold dash at night too for both the IWGP Heavyweight and IWGP Intercontinental Championships. Uh, to crown the first ever double champion so yeah excellent main event to end an excellent wrestle kingdom like i said i thought this show was the best wrestle kingdom we've had since wrestle kingdom 9 uh just i loved every second of the show i thought it was very enjoyable it was very fun you had a lot of great matches you had a lot of memorable moments and it's an overall feel good experience it's one of those wrestling shows where you watch and you just can't help but feel all you know giddily and, and happy inside because you had such a good time and uh it kind of embodied why you, you love pro wrestling so much so yeah wrestle kingdom 14 
uh, night one, like I said, excellent show. I don't think night two is going to top this one, unfortunately. I just don't think it has a stronger card, but I'm not counting anything out. Anything's possible. Uh, I just know it'll be a good time. So I'm really excited for night two. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please feel free to leave a like below. And of course, my review for night two. I'll see you guys and thank you guys for watching the video.